So yesterday in the wake of the tragic murders um, that happened at the Atlanta spas, the, there's been quite the controversy that has broken out around one particular comment from one of the sheriffs that were involved in the press conference yesterday. I wanna give you the context uh, by playing the video where he said that, well, the murderer had a bad day. Let's start there. The suspect did uh, take responsibility for the shootings. Um, he uh, said that early on once we began the interviews with him. Um, he claims that these, and as the chief said, we know this is still early, but he does claim that it was not racially motivated. He apparently has an issue, uh, what he considers a, a, a sex fiction, and sees these locations as something that allows him to, uh, to, um, to go to these places, and, and it's a temptation for him that he wanted to eliminate. Um, like I said, it's still early on, but those were, those were comments that he made. Did he discuss any kind of religious uh, motivation for this, or was he responsible? Not that I'm aware of. Not that I'm aware of. Or political. Non political. I've heard nothing about politics. They got that impression that yes, he, he understood um, the gravity of it, and he was pretty much fed up, and then kind of at the end of his rope. And, um, and yesterday was a really bad day for him, and this is what he did. Remorseful? I'm not going to go to, I don't know if he was remorseful or not. So yesterday was a really bad day for him. Obviously, that was a repulsive comment that I most people quickly identified as, as sympathizing with a mass murderer. Uh, the New York Times picked it up and said the following, quote, the comments were widely panned on social media with critics characterizing them as callous and pointing to Facebook posts from March 30th and April 2nd of last year by Captain Baker, in which he promoted sales of an anti-Asian t-shirt. The t-shirts echoing the rhetoric of President Donald J. Trump referred to the coronavirus as an quote, important virus from China. And the article went on to say, place your order. This is a quote from his actual social media post. Place your order while they last, Captain Baker wrote at the time of one of the posts. He did not immediately respond to requests for comment on Wednesday. So obviously when he said this, everyone's when he said that he had a bad day, everyone rightly got the sensation that there's something Something wrong with this Captain Baker and social media quickly discovered that, well, one of the reasons he may have sympathized with the mass murderer who targeted Asians, uh, Asian Americans is because he himself is a racist and has racist uh, racism towards particularly that group. You could bring the image on the screen, you can see right now, you can see the images of the COVID-19 t-shirts in the form of a Corona, uh, the alcoholic beverage Corona. And then underneath it, imported virus from China with the annunciation attributing to Donald Trump. So Jake, um, this is a, a really s terrible addition to a story that's already tragic. But it is really consistent in terms of what Ray, uh, Baker said yesterday at that press conference and the fact that it was quite easy for social media to dig up the fact that he himself is a racist. Yeah, so Ben had to explain to me before the show started why spell China C H Y dash N A, and and that's apparently a reference to Trump saying China. Okay, uh, if you act now, this extra bit of racism thrown in for free in this T-shirt, right? And so, and by the way, his message almost read exactly like that. Um, so, look, guys, the thing about. Um, Folks uh, who have discriminatory points of view, you know, you go racist, bigot, this, you name it. I, I'm tr sometimes I try to hold off on saying that because I know that it's such a trigger for right wingers that they immediately shut off their minds. Uh, there, no, I, racism can't exist. I can't possibly have it. So the minute you use that word, I will go to a corner and cry until you're done. And but I will not open my ears or my mind, right? Um, but why would you do, wear a shirt like that? Uh, what are you trying to, what is a message you're trying to deliver with that shirt, right? So like on TYT, we have a shirt that says Mount Squad more. The message being delivered is obvious, we like the squad, right? And that's in Congress. This shirt is, oh, COVID-19 is bad, but we all know COVID-19 is bad. Like you're gonna wear a shirt that says, uh, I don't like AIDS. Okay, like, but what's your point? What, what, why, what are you saying? Mm -hmm. And of course, especially with the way that China is, Spell there, right? To make to evoke Trump's racist way of referring to China, and the whole point of the shirt is this isn't about COVID. This is about me hating 
that this came from China. Look, you could turn that around and say the people that are most responsible for coronavirus is us here in America. And we had the most cases, we had the most deaths. We also spread it to the most places. So in China, they it appears to have started in Wuhan, right? And so that's bad. I don't know what, well, first of all, we don't know why it started. The most likely reason is for a transmission from animals to humans, and it might have been in a roundabout way. So that's kind of random. That's not anybody's fault, right? And then the question is, how do you deal with it? The Chinese government is at fault for not immediately being honest and transparent about it. But again, we don't have a great leg to stand on here. Our government was not very honest or transparent about it, let alone knowledgeable, you know, yeah. hydroxy and inject the bleach and all that stuff, right? So no, you're trying to make a political point about Asians, right? Like, so like, they're, if you put on a t-shirt about the Spanish flu and you're like, the goddamn Spanish did it to us. The point is the Spanish part, not the Spanish flu part, right? So, and by the way, that also did not start in Spain. Okay, <laughs> that also started in America, not also, but that one started in America. So, but now back to the really important part here of, okay, why does, what we're, what are we concerned about? We're concerned about whether the sheriff can deliver equal justice. So when he has a shirt like that and proudly puts that out into the world, you get a big a sense of his mindset. But Ben is right, you get a, more of a sense of his mindset from the press conference. Now everybody's focusing on he had a bad day. It makes it seem like sympathetic to him, like the people who died had a much worse day. That's not how he framed it. He thought about it from the perspective of the shooter. Now that's not something that cops do often. Now I've never heard a police officer of any kind saying about a Muslim terrorist attack. Well, to be fair, Ahmed had a bad day, never. Not once, nor will you ever see that. And you know that, everybody knows that, even if you're a right winger, you know that, right? It's about perspective, right? So then I want to talk about the things that are not, that have not been talked about in the press as much. He also said, you know, and this is, this is, this people have talked about this to some degree. What he says is that it was not racist. Uh, well, look, I get some of the logic. If he said it was about race, then it makes it easy and apparent, right? And he's relaying information to you. It's not all bad, but I'm also not overly concerned about the what the homicidal lunatic said, right? It's it's but and a lot of people have made these comments online. You know, serial rapists don't go around saying no, no, no. It's because I hated women, <laughs> but their actions are fairly clear, right? So and then, but finally, the part I don't think a lot of people have talked about. He said he takes responsibility for it. Now, again, I've never heard that framing from a police officer. When a black person takes responsibility, it's called a confession. Mm. Now, when a white guy who hates Asians, kind of like you, does a confession, it's not a confession. He's taking responsibility, like he's a stand up guy. That goes to frame of mind. And that's what we're concerned about in equal application of justice by police officers. Wow, Jake, I, that, that's a, such an important point, how just the turn of phrase, right? And the fact that he had the frame of mind, uh, this, this sheriff's officer, whoever, um, he had the frame of mind, thought of presence of mind to turn that phrase really points to the fact that this is a comrade of his. This is somebody who he has more identification with than the victims. And as it pertains to those t-shirts, one of the things that jumps out the most to me in this country is the need and how effective, quite honestly, Donald Trump and conservatives were with deflecting from our culpability, our responsibility, their responsibility for this virus spreading as fast and as viciously as it did. And they they know clearly the technique to get away with that is to other somebody, like to vilify someone. Someone had to be the villain in order for them to get away with, quite frankly, the stupidity that we've seen not only since last year, but all the way to today with Rand Paul still suggesting that we shouldn't wear a mask anymore. So this China t-shirt is part and parcel of the strategy of conservatives to make sure that the Republican Party, Donald Trump specifically, Fox News and everyone else who played this pandemic down bore no responsibility. And how do you get away with that? You make another villain and that's what they did here. That's 100% right. And, and, and look, by the way, there could be a range of options as to why he did what he did. And it's not binary. People are now trying to say, well, is it random? Usually when it's white folks, 
People say random lone wolf, nothing we could do. No, no political angle, no religious angle, no nothing, right? Yeah. And then is it religious or is it racial? The answer could be some combination thereof, right? So is he mentally unbalanced? Well, obviously he killed eight people, right? Is, is a Muslim terrorist unbalanced? Yeah, obviously they killed eight people, right? They did, you, even angry people of a certain ideology don't kill eight people. They do when they're mentally unbalanced. Right, and so then secondarily, are racial and religious components present here? They certainly appear to be. I'm not foreclosing any options, but I'm saying you don't have to put it in just one bucket. But but one thing is to me is absolutely clear. The guy says over and over again he thought he had a sexual addiction. His his particular church and. And that doesn't mean that it applies to everyone at that church. It's just that interpretation taught him that having sex with was terrible and you should hate yourself for it. But they, on top of that layered in, women have tempted you. Mm. And hence the implication is you should hate them as well. So if you want to protect that interpretation of religion, you are wrong. It does lead to misogyny. And oftentimes it does lead to crimes like this. It doesn't matter what religion it comes from. If you're teaching people, men, that it is women's fault for X, Y, or Z, not based on any fact, but based on old, you know, misogyny and sexism, etc. Mm. Yeah, you're you're culpable. You put that poison in his head. So let's be real about that. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Uh, I think we've got a poll here. Uh, let's go to tyt.com slash polls. Will the Georgia Sheriff spokesperson lose his job over racist social media posts? Yes or no? Okay, it's a good question. Another good question for another day is should he? Mm. Uh, and so look, Ben, on that front, one more thing. Sometimes I even catch myself feeling guilty about pointing out other people's racism. Like I, I want to cushion the blow for white folks in the audience because they really, really do get very sensitive about that, and yeah. sometimes rightfully so, not often, right? But sometimes, and sometimes wrongfully so. And I catch myself being like, "Look, guys, can you see why this is partly as a as a a way of better communicating with folks and reaching out to them and trying to evoke empathy to have a human conversation, but partly because." If you're gonna say, hey, maybe that guy might be discriminatory towards Asians and he has a gun and a badge, etc. Maybe we shouldn't do that. I know that a lot of white folks are gonna react with, oh, now you're being totally unfair to him just for being racist. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I can see what you're saying, Jane, but I, I've got so many gray hairs from trying to um, deal in good faith with people who intentionally have no intention of dealing in good faith in these conversations. And I'm kind of at the point now where it's like, you know, I'll use myself as an example. I used to get really sensitive when I would see posts about misogyny or all men do this and all men do that. And eventually I just had to come to, I had to come to terms with the fact that, you know what? I, even if it's not me, it is, it exists. And if I'm so sensitive about them saying something that hurts me and my feelings just because I'm a man, then I'm probably complicit with this entire problem in the first place. And it wasn't until I was getting off a train in Boston one year and this guy just acting normal asked me for a pin, pre-pandemic obviously, I gave him a pin. And this young woman got off the train and he went from professional to complete barbarian in .001 seconds. And I was like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna shut my mouth anytime someone says something about men because it may not be all men, but having just one who can act on that 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 level of vitriol towards women is extremely dangerous. So that's my world. Yeah, well, last piece of irony here. You know, Ben Shapiro has that line about facts don't care about your feelings. But man, the right wing's got a lot of feelings. <laughs> and you and we all have to be right. so sensitive, like Babies. like couch our critique and like are you, are you guys okay? Like I, that's a cop that might you know not care about Asians that are suffering a crime and he's a cop or he might even do things against Asians with his badge and his gun. Are you guys okay? Are you guys okay? Are your feelings okay? <laughs> oh go. Whew. Your feelings are okay, all right. Now can we get to the facts about anti-Asian crime, yeah. etc. We spend so much of our collective energy 
worrying about the feelings of right wingers. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for watching the Young Turks. I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.